Cheers to watching Beyond the Continent and we're continuing the news in Europe where the United Nations chief has urged world leaders to take decisive action to tackle ever worsening climate change when they gather at the COP28 summit in Dubai starting this week. According to UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, the world is trapped in a deadly cycle, adding that the solutions are well known. He explained that leaders must act to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius, protect people from climate chaos, and end the fossil fuel age. National negotiators at COP28 will grapple with flashpoint issues, including the future of fossil fuels, oil, gas, coal, and financial aid from rich polluters for the poorer nations and most vulnerable to accelerating climate disruption. We are trapped in a deadly cycle. Ice reflects the sun's rays. As it vanishes, more heat is absorbed into the Earth's atmosphere. And that means more heating, which means more storms, floods, fires and droughts across the globe, and more melting, which means, with less ice, even more heating. At COP28, which starts later this week, leaders must break this cycle. I'm now joined by climate change and environment advocate Rama Kirui to further discuss this. Hello, Rama. Thank you for joining us. Rama, could you please unmute your device? All right. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for embracing me and sharing my knowledge and experience regarding climate change and environment. It's a pleasure. Now, Rama, in recent months, uh, a lot of countries around the world have been faced with serious climate issues from flooding to wildfires. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the major cause of this? So um, most of the countries across the globe have been fa facing a lot of wildfires and floodings due specifically to climate change. So the climate change has contributed to an increase of heat and he heavy rainfall to some areas. Some areas have led to increase of temperature because and the places that have high temperatures is when you can you can find that the areas get to be affected with um, fire in the areas because there is condition of the heat in the place particular, but also the heavy rainfall. There are changes of the weather patterns. Some areas do not experience rain, for example, on July. Some areas used to experience rain maybe on June or May. But then when they, the rain comes pour up, it pours in a very severe way. And when the rain flows from the area, there are some of human activities that have happened or taken place on that particular place. So there is no any kind of a place that or a kind of situation that will be able to control the amount of water that will be pouring in the area. Deforestation issues can happen, which means when deforestation takes place, it allows water to pass through very quickly or very hard during heavy and severe rainfall in places. So when you find um, this kind of situation, increase of high temperatures, droughts, human activities, heavy rainfall, melting of ice, deforestation, and changes of the river patterns all can contribute to severe floods in areas which can lead to displacement of people, destruction of properties, but also it can lead to death of both animals and also human beings. But also we have seen some places or some countries have experienced fires, as you said, and the places tend to lose the, their nature, their natural places tend to disappear due to heavy and severe wildfire on the places. Right. Uh, now, Rama, according to the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, the solutions to these problems are well known. What are some of the international approaches to mitigate the adverse effects of climate change? So some of the actions that have been done uh, globally with the international process, we also have, according to the IPCC reports of the UN uh, body and the uh, the scientific studies have been done showing that human activities are some of the causes for the climate uh, crisis and the impacts of climate changes in the, in the environment. So we have had um, the global corporations where most of the times people or the globe tend to meet together and discuss on ways they can solve the, the, the planet, they can help and ensure everybody has access to sustainable and increase of the livelihood. But also their provision of funds, of which um, the funds enable the countries that are affected with climate change, but also countries that are affected with climate change um, to be able to mitigate and adapt to climate changes. So these kind of funds enable the countries to come up with various initiatives or various projects that will enable the country to adapt and mitigate on climate changes. But also we have various campaigns and advocacy that the countries itself tend to come up 
with to ensure that they raise awareness and knowledge to the people or the community in their own countries to take action in addressing climate change. Because as we are talking about addressing climate change, it's not an individual thing. It's a community thing. It's true that you can do it individually, but to be able to attain and create a huge impact on the community, you have to make sure you're doing it cooperatively with the community. So the country is trying to its level best to provide education and awareness to young children, to the youth and the community at large. The importance of joining their hands together, advocating together to raise awareness to the community, but also pushing forward their agendas. And um, the countries have NDCs, so when the countries prepare their national, uh, their national service contributions, they also ensure that they include the challenges that the country face and present them to the conference of parties. And when they present them to the conference of parties is when they discuss on how much their countries has attained in combating and acting for climate change and how they can be supported to ensure that their advocacy, their action taking, it really improves and takes more actions to ensure equipping and producing a community that is sustainable and healthy and safe for everybody to live on. All right, Rama, thank you so much for joining us to discuss climate change issues and hopefully something is done about it soon and we get positive responses from the COP28 summit. Thank you once again. Thank you so much.